Welcome to another edition of Maverick University. I'm your host, David Hallberg. Joining me is Pastor John C., pastor of Frederick Baptist Church from Frederick, Maryland. Yes, that's and, correct. And you uh, are preaching for us today in College Chapel. I appreciate you coming in and wanted to get you in the studio. Um, your daughter came here uh, as a student of Providence Baptist College and uh, enjoyed her time here. We enjoyed her, at uh, least, anyway. Well, praise the Lord. That's good to hear. That's yes. good to hear. But I uh, wanted to talk with you a little bit about um, a topic, not necessarily a ministry topic, more, mm. more of a home topic. You mm. have three children. Four children. Four children, okay. Mm. Um, three girls, one boy, two boys, two Three girls. girls and one boy. That's right, okay. And obviously your children are getting to the age where they're leaving the nest and mm. they're starting their own lives independent from you and your, and your wife. And in my brainstorming of asking you to come in on the studio, the reason why I asked about that topic is because as a father, mm -hmm. I'm beginning to realize that time is short. Yes. Uh, my daughter oh, yes. just celebrated her 12th birthday okay. uh, just last week, and it's you realize that, wow, two-thirds two of the time that she will spend in my home mm -hmm. are gone, yes. assuming you know she right. moves out right. at 18, moves into right. dorms, goes to college, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that my window of influence oh, yeah. on my daughter is quickly coming to a close. And so I wanted to ask you a little mm. bit about child rearing, the yeah, family, yeah. Uh, in a pastor's household, maybe a, mm. be an encouragement to other pastors. So yeah. can you tell me a little bit about your experience yeah. uh, in your home? Uh, how long have you been a pastor? Have your kids always grown up in a pastor's home? Mm. And the challenges that come with that? Well, thank you, Brother Hallberg. Thanks for allowing me to be a part of this. And this is a subject really near and dear to me, mm -hmm. you know, especially um, having worked in different capacities with young people that have grown up in the ministry, grown up in Christian homes, and knowing maybe some of the challenges that can exist that aren't necessary. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing about it is what, my kids have all they've known is ministry. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, I was 21 when I got married. My wife was 18. Wow. And then within one, then the next year we had our first daughter Okay. Uh, in 92. We got married in 91. Sarah came our oldest in 92. Cynthia came the next year in 93. Then four years later came John Mark in 96. And then four more years later came Chris, our, our last in 2000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our children were all raised in the ministry. It's all they've known. Mm -hmm. I think a, a few things that, you know, that we have tried to do as parents, even in the ministry, uh, is not raise our children with that backdrop. You know, we, we're, we, we're Bible believers, we love the Lord, we're Christians. And so our house was set up based on that. Got and, it. And, and what, we, what we, we strove to teach them and wanted them to be had nothing to do with my position or calling. Mm -hmm. You know, whether I'd be an engineer, whether I was a, you know, an IT person, whether I worked in a factory or a mechanic, you know, there's certain principles that are the same regardless. Now, the backdrop can't be ignored, and I'll touch on that in just a little bit. Sure. They, they couldn't get away from the fact they were, you know, an assistant, a youth pastor's child or a, a, a college vice president's child or a pastor's child. You know, mm -hmm. the, the tags and titles were there, especially in, in, in our type of church environment where, you know, our families and our children are here a lot. Sure. And they're around, yeah. you know, a lot, of, a lot of church people a lot, you know, where, 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 where our titles are thrown around a lot. Mm. So, but we wanted to establish a culture in our home <clears throat> that was very strong, that it didn't matter what my title was or, or what my position was, that these were things we believed and we did because this is what the Bible says. Well, I, I completely agree. While a position may change, yeah, yeah. the one thing that shouldn't change is, hey, we're Christians. Right, You right. have a Christian father, you have a Christian mother. That's this right. is what Christians do. We believe what version of the Bible we believe because if we believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, the standards we held, you know, inside and outside the home, we wanted to have consistency. Mm -hmm. We weren't one thing at church and one thing on vacation and one thing in the home. Now, obviously, I didn't wear a shirt and tie and a suit at home. And, sure. you know, my, my children didn't call me Brother C or Pastor C. And, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they got to see me in my blue jeans. They got to see me, you know, work clothes and all. But the, there are certain modesty standards were consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, certain gender distinctive standards consistent. Our music standards were consistent. You know, but it, and, and it had nothing to do with my position. It was this what the Bible teaches, this what that would honor the Lord. And uh, we, we, we try our very best to, to establish that foundation with them so that as they were growing up in the environment that they'd be in, you know, mm -hmm. they'd be at church a lot around. And, you know, uh, our kids have told us now looking back, they were there were times where people were questioning them often, do you do this now because your parents tell you to do this or you believe to do it? Oh, uh, yeah. Even our youngest daughter, Chris, had talked about there was a teenage girl in our youth department that was trying to get her to to uh, to to uh, do something that was wrong, uh, and that you know over at her home, mm 
Mm-hmm. Now, she wasn't allowed to go over there, but was trying to, hey, why don't you work it out, try to come over here, we can do this, because, you know, you don't have to always go, go by what your parents say. Hmm. You know, at some point in time, you can do your own thing, just, just don't get it, you know, you can sneak around, do this, that, and the other. And unfortunately, Chris was able to tell her, well, no, I don't just do this because this is what my mom and dad say, this is what I do because I believe this is what the Bible says. Absolutely. And try to ground them in that. But with that being said, you know, we try to create that atmosphere of there's no no glass bowl pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not trying to please anybody. We're not trying to worry about. We never try to allow outside pressures influence how we made our decisions with our kids. Um, it was you know having the heart for God. But then somebody told me years ago, I was a missionary, I think that had ordered raised his children, and I was very impressed with the spirit heart of his kids, and just they were, they were adults and serving the Lord, and mm-hmm. just were happy serving God, had good attitudes, and it just was really they were they were good people. They were good people. People. And here's what he, he said to me. He said, you know, whether, when, when Jesus was asked, um, what's the greatest commandment? He gave a twofold answer. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. The second is like unto the first, uh, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself. And as you think about that, Christ laid out for us the two things that we should always be working on. And he said two things that we've always tried to teach our children. Number one, is to have a genuine heart for God. And number two, have a genuine love for people. Yeah, he said. If in and if you if you can focus on helping and helping your kids have a genuine heart for God and helping your kids love people and have a genuine heart for people and everything has to be filtered through that. Mm-hmm. Anything that doesn't doesn't support that, you know, isn't a part of your life and your family. Mm-hmm. And and what that where that helped me is the fact that we watch a lot of times. Let's say now we're talking about the ministry side. Sometimes I've seen full time workers' kids who weren't necessarily good with people. Mm-hmm. They had the standards. They 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 checked the boxes. They they dotted the eyes, but it was more you know out of conformity. But at the same time, you know there there was not a genuine connection with just people in general. Mm-hmm. And when we serve the Lord, we serve people. Yeah, we serve people, and so we we strove hard also uh, to help our children fall in love with people. And in doing that, you got to be around people. Yeah. And you got to be vulnerable a little bit in the sense that they're going to get their feelings hurt. You know, they're going to go through all the dynamics that we go through. Mm-hmm. And instead of, you know, shielding them from certain emotional things they had to, had to uh, that, that go with developing a heart for people, we kind of work them through that. But uh, to us, that was one of the biggest things we did is really working at not just the side of the spiritual, uh, but also really helping them to have a heart and a love and learn and know how to serve people. Well, yeah, you talked about that glass bowl environment. And if you're not careful, there's so many outside pressures and oh, influences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's nice to just take it down to the simplest, you know, two commands, love yeah. God, love your neighbor. And like you said, it takes a lot of pressure off, I think, of a child oh, yes. when they realize that, hey, who cares what anybody else expects of me? Let's even who cares what my parents expect of me? As long as right. I fulfill these two commands, then my parents shouldn't have a problem. Those outside my home shouldn't have a problem. Right. And there were times when our kids were teenagers. They've all went through where we connected them to people. We mm-hmm. constantly had, and we were choosing. Don't misunderstand me. We didn't yeah. throw them to the wolves, you know, and exposure, you know, the, the worldly philosophy of, you know, we need to expose them to all the different, mm-hmm. you know, type of things so they can make up their mind on their own. Well, you know, that, that doesn't work. You know, because the people that are going to, there are there are groups out there that that's what, they, they want to brainwash our kids. Yeah. And, they, and they want us, they, they tell us to do that so they can brainwash them. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, so we, 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 we insulated them by all means. But we, we had people in our lives that supported our positions mm. and that um, we knew would be a good influence on them and would be saying a lot of the same things, but from a different way in another relationship. And each of our children have given testimony. You know, we're fortunate right now. Our, our oldest is 31. Our youngest, uh, uh, Kristen, now is 23, going to be mm-hmm. 24. And um, they've all given testimony that there were times where they were struggling with different parts of their walk with the Lord or with some other things with church. And it wasn't just that walking away from God or walking away from mom and dad, but there were a lot of other people now that were invested in their lives that they had relationships with. Yeah. There were just so many people that they'd be letting down and walking away from, mm-hmm. you know, that they were just they knew they could never even entertain that. Yeah, and protecting your child with the right influences. Yeah. And then when you say that you wanted your kids to interact with people and be people, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, were there certain characteristics that you were striving for? And every child is different. Some are a little bit no, more it's, bashful. It's a great question. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what yeah. 
what were some things that you had to work on with some of your kids in order to help them become influential? And that's what a Christian's yeah, called yeah, to be. They're yeah, called to yeah. influence people with the gospel. Right, and that's a great question. Um, we're adults. Mm-hmm. You know, we we uh, we only allowed them to be to to have so much <clears throat> peer interaction. Mm-hmm. Now we had that; they had activities, the sports or yeah. whatever, but it wasn't it didn't dominate. They they it was a the ratio of the amount of time our children spent uh, with people their own age and people that were older than them uh, was was very proportioned in the sense that they probably were around adults more than they were, they were around other teenagers. Really. Yes, we did that on purpose. Okay, yeah. And because it's an adult world, mm-hmm. they're going to live in an adult world. And, and we, we never felt like we were raising children. We were raising adults. Mm-hmm. I grew up in an agricultural area in Wisconsin. We never said we were raising seed potatoes. We raised potatoes. Got it. We never said we were you know, raising calves. We were raising steer. Mm-hmm. We didn't say we were raising puppies. We were raising coon hounds. You know, we always had the adult version or the, the full-grown version in, in mind. Everything we did for the seed that was put in was to help it become what it's supposed to be full grown. Mm-hmm. And so I think sometimes when it comes to raising our raising, we, we looked at it as raising adults. We're raising adults. Okay. Yeah. And they go through all the life stages to get there. You know, they're children, they're adolescent, they're teenagers, whatever you want to call it. But ultimately, they're, they're, this is an adult world. Yep. Now, what's backwards about today's society, we've given it over to teenagers. Mm-hmm. You know, we kinda, we've kind of looked, instead of the adults leading, you know, the teenagers often lead the adults. But we wanted our children to be prepared for the adult world. Mm-hmm. So they, there were some awkward stages for them with teens at times because of the fact that they were our, te- our, young, our kids were very comfortable in the adult world. They were very comfortable with adults. They were very comfortable with their adult relationships. They, they communicated well with their teachers. They communicated well with their, their other authorities. They communicated well with people in the church that were adults. Mm-hmm. And uh, most teenagers aren't. They're very awkward. Yeah. They're very backwards. They're very insecure when it comes to those relationships because you, you have to be able to be a little more transparent. So we, we, we wanted people that we knew uh, would uh, kind of push them a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, like with my son, for instance, I'd have men involved that that uh, that that I outsource some activities, uh, you know, where some outside labor, for instance, like you know, cutting wood, uh, you know, hunting. Uh, there'd be some other things that I would let other people be a part of his life, um, you know, mechanical stuff. But men who were going to be going to push him. Yeah. But I knew we had a good relationship. They were going to be supportive. They weren't going to undermine. Mm-hmm. You know what we were, but they were strong in the church, and and also at the same time they were gonna like you know, uh, you you got you enforce the parental relationship, sure. You know enforce uh, what it means to be in church and and serve the Lord and uh, and kind of help him be his own man, but at the same time you know be under authority. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, or not. absolutely. I mean, for example, if you're not the best at, um, you know. Construction, yeah, but there's yeah. a man in your church who is, who's yeah. a godly man you trust. Yeah, get your sons yeah. over to his we wood outs- shop or yeah, whatever. No, no, no. We know? and we did, I did. We outsourced. We yeah. outsourced, and and they loved it because most of the time, it, men at certain ages or ladies at certain ages love giving back to the next generation, mm-hmm. especially in a meaningful relationship. Sure. So now, with when our kids look back, when you were asked them, who are your best friends at church? Looking back now, yeah, they they won't they won't name to you their peers. That's huge. It's going to be a, it's going to be adults. Yeah. Well, now that they're adults, you think about how much they're now peers. Yes. Yeah. And now they're and because they were influenced by people who were adults leading, mm-hmm. they know how to lead. They know how to lead at their ages. And yeah. So they're not only picking up life skills from yeah. these folks, but they're picking up the people skills yeah. to have those adult conversations right. and interact with people on a personal level. Right, right. And just as a testimony, that's one of the first things that when Carissa came here to school, I noticed about her is even on day one, she wasn't just having conversations with the other college freshmen. Mm. Uh, she was <laughs> interacting with Pastor Gomez. She was yeah. interacting with you know the vice president, Mike Hall, and myself and my wife, and just was a joy to talk to. Um, and came to us with an open face and with you know just the ability to carry on a conversation. It yeah, was really that's great was, to hear. It was very pleasant. I enjoyed it. So at, uh, so get them in the in the um, sphere of influence of other adult Christian yeah, yeah. folks. Um, and can you talk a little bit about even the influence of getting the gospel out? Obviously, you're not getting the gospel to those folks that are already Christians. They're going to have to interact with the lost world. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you'll want to do it under certain parameters. What what was your goal? What was your... 
Well, you know, we we uh, we raised them serving with us. Like I was a bus captain for many years, bus okay. director, and and our children were raised serving with us in that capacity and mm-hmm. watching us interact with people of all different walks of life, and and they were a part of that. Yeah. We knew, they, they the people that knew us knew our kids. Yep. You know, when I was in the college and career department, we started. I started a, a Bible study on the University of Transylvania, really? uh, and, and and it ended up being like a, one of the largest. Uh, it was we got sponsored by. It took us a year and a half to get it going because we had to get be sponsored by a professor. It was one of the most liberal, liberal arts universities mm-hmm. in Kentucky. Yeah, it's very you know, and it, it was a, it's a story how we even got on there. But I, when I was a college and career director, started in one guy's dorm room mm-hmm. and it ended up being a full blown. Uh, we had it was its own recognized. Um, so, uh, I don't know what you want to call, but club it was a club. Group. It was a yeah. club, yeah, yeah. club. Yeah. And we ended up having about thirty-five that would come out to that thing. Wow! And we'd have the, but we'd have those those Transylvania, and these are kids from all walks of life now mm-hmm. at these you know secular universities. Sure. And uh, but we'd have them to our home now and then for a home cooked meal, a game night. Sure. Well, our children got to be interact with these folks mm-hmm. and got to build those relationships. And not, not everybody was an independent fundamental Baptist. Sure, yeah. You know, that was coming over. And, and then they got to watch us interact and see how we interacted. And then they got to come to a couple times to those Bible studies and, and they built those rela- And we got some of those, a lot of those people into church and mm-hmm. saved and baptized. But they were, they were watching, these were, you know, non traditional church relationships. Mm-hmm. And so they were watching how mom and dad. You know, Exhibit A is so important. Yeah. You know, it, it, I think it's so important for our kids to see us doing things that we want them to do. Absolutely. Because yeah. then it, it reinforces what we're saying. So they were watching my wife and I as comfortable with this young person from a secular university who's questioning, is the Bible even the Word of God? Yeah. As we are somebody in the church that was raised all their life as an independent fundamental Baptist. We were as comfortable in both arenas, and we were able to connect just as well on this person is that person in building a relationship. And, uh, and today, you know, today I still have relationships from a lot of those young people yeah. that were a part of that Bible study from the University of Transylvania. And I got an email from one of, the, one of my former um, club members, if you want to call it that, yeah. two weeks ago. And really? so, and they asked about our kids. How are they doing? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> How are your kids doing? And yeah. naming them by name. And so, and then in the bus ministry, mm-hmm. you know, because ministry is relationships. It's sure. people. It's people. So when we were, when I was a bus captain, you know, we, we were, were invested in the lives of the people that I'm a bus captain of. They're not just numbers on the bus. They're not just riders on a bus. It's not just a number for a goal. Mm-hmm. These are real people, yeah. live in real homes, have yeah. real problems. And so they got to watch, you know, my wife and I connect Okay, with that, with that, people, you know, folks in in that, you know, corner of life, so to speak, mm-hmm. and get phone calls and and even you know helping people and during holidays we'd bring stuff to their homes and you know and 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 they and it was a real relationships you know um, so they got to be a part of that and then of course you know um, and I think from from I think John Mark he worked a, an outside job I think his. Uh, uh, his year after I held him back one year after graduating from high school because he's a young graduate from high school. Okay, yeah. And I felt like I didn't want him to be a knucklehead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Send him off to Bible college and say, you know, yeah. grade thirteen for this kid. I didn't want. I told him I said, son, you're you're not ready. I'm not going to send you off to Bible college and you're going to be a knucklehead for a year. Yeah, and that's know? parental wisdom yeah. insight. You know, so you Only need to you can make that. Uh, you need to be more grounded in in what it means to be an adult. So, but but then you know. Um, and that where he worked at, yeah. um, and I mentioned to him, I said, that, that, look at your job as ministry. Mm-hmm. You know, I said, I'll tell you how you can be successful at, at this work. I said, you're going to be around a lot of different kinds of people. I said, you, you know, you're going to have a lot of things that you've not been around a whole lot. But I said, but this is what the ministry is. You know, we don't deal with perfect people. We deal with people mm-hmm. that need Christ. So you're going to have to, you're not going to, you can't act offended at everything you see and everything you hear. Yeah, because so many Christian kids, they go from their Christian home yeah. out to a secular work force without any preparation and absolutely shocked at yeah. what they're seeing and hearing and experiencing and they'll their their reaction can almost be a turnoff you know yeah. to those lost people you know and this, I told, is, I, this is normal for them and you i know? said you learn how to do the things nobody yeah. wants. i told them learn how to do things nobody wants to do i said you want to work your way up quickly yeah do the things that nobody else wants to do and do them with a good attitude mm. i said secondly uh, you know, be a help to your coworkers, but yeah. don't do it in a good, as a goody goody. Yeah. Just hey, let me help you. Okay, yeah. let me help you. They're gonna think you're weird at first because nobody does that. Yeah, you know, but do it. 
Uh, and I said, you know, then I said, be respectful to your people over you, even if you don't like the way they're talking to you, even if you don't like what they're, even if it's because they're going to ask, you're going to find because you will do what they ask you to do without complaining, they're going to ask you to do more. They're going to take advantage. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I said, you are going to get milk. I said, do it. Yeah. Do it. I said, and be respectful. Then I said, find find a few people at your workplace that are really, you know, um, kind of out there. I said, try to learn how to build relationships with those people. Pray for them. You know, learn how to cut up with them. Show them that we're normal people. Mm-hmm. And disarm them. And, uh, he, and he had a great year. Matter of fact, in, you know, even after a couple of years of him leaving where he was working at, whenever he'd go back, they're like, hey, you know. Yeah. And so, and he had several of those people in church. And, and it just on its own organically, they got to realize, you know, that, you know, and he was never shy that he was a Christian. Mm-hmm. He was never shy that he was called to preach. He was never shy about what he believed, mm-hmm. you know, never shy at all about that. And they'd ask him his opinions. If they're talking, you know, laterally, he'd tell them what he thought, mm-hmm. you know, and he'd have substance to it. And they're not used to that. Yeah. They're not used to somebody engaging with them, you know, that actually can be more than one layer. Yeah, they have they have, have a backing. But at the same yeah. time, wasn't threatened by what they were saying. Mm-hmm. Well, and he, what you said, he was just simply repeating what he observed you do yeah. in probably that Bible study at that campus. And so what happened is organically then they're at the workplace, people quit cussing around him. Yeah. They were just like, they respected him. I said, because you'll find in the world, because my background's secular. Yeah. I said, you'll find in the world everything normalizes. I mean, in, in the world, things normalize. Mm-hmm. That's good and bad, because mm-hmm. bad things can normalize. Yeah, yeah. But they'll, they, once you begin to build those relationships on a consistent basis with the people you, you work at, you become part of the normal picture. Yeah. And even though you're different than them, you're part of their normal picture. You fit in the puzzle. And so you're, yeah. you're part of the team now. Yeah. And, and, and they're not going to want you to, if they like you, they're going to be sensitive to who you are. You don't ever have to make demands. No, and you so on their request. own, they quit cussing around him. When people yeah. would, new people would be hired and start cussing, they'd, hey, don't cuss around him. They would yeah. correct people. Yeah. And then even the music began to change. Mm-hmm. You know, because I asked him one time, hey, what kind of music do you listen to? And he said, not this. <laughs> and they were like, well, well, why not this? And so a whole conversation yeah. got into music, you know, and, and, and they started it. So, yeah. and I said, then you, once they started, you can finish it, but just read the room, you know, when to pull back. And then after a while, they're like, you know, whenever he was around, they're like, hey, turn that music <laughs> off. And he wouldn't have to ask them to do it. That's awesome. And so, and again, it just the idea of, of uh, I think just, you know, realizing the need and, and, and the thing about it, like what Paul said, I became all things all men that I might, you know, reach reach some. We obviously know he never compromised what he believed. He never adopted to, adapted himself to sin or mm-hmm. but he was able to connect to the person. Yeah. Without changing who he was or what he believed. And I you know, and I guess that's probably my secular background. Yeah. You know, uh, and my background being not raised in church is that you know you we can't be afraid of people because yep. that's who we're supposed to reach mm-hmm. we can't be afraid of them and and uh, no matter who they are we just can't be afraid of them yeah love god love people love that's god. all it is yeah this is going to be very helpful helpful to me as well as a father and gives me some ammunition some direction to go with my kids and i'm sure it'll help a lot of other people as well, well amen you know, pastors and laymen alike so yeah. make sure you check out us out on the youtube channel and make sure that you like this video and you share it with somebody who will be benefited by it And also make sure that you subscribe and check out the audio-only platforms as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you.